What is up guys, it's boy Ganso and welcome back to a new video. Fun fact, this video was brought to you by Skillshare, more about it at the end of the video. So yeah, I know I've been away for like a week, uh, I've been in London, but I'm back so let's just jump into it. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a Skypeer type beat or something similar at least. Uh, because I can't really replicate his sound and I didn't really want to fully replicate it I already have a track made because you can't really whip this up in five minutes So I'm just gonna break it down for you guys and tell you exactly what I did to get this sound <laughs> project looks like this it's a bit big because you know it has to be complex so let's break it down in order of appearance basically so I'm gonna start with the kicks and then you know so for the kick I wanted something that could punch hard but I didn't want to go too hard with it so I'm not gonna use my go to kick I actually used a similar kick which was a bit more wide the pattern is quite simple I didn't want it to be overly uh, active nor too slow so it sounds like this. Pretty good. Also, I need to mention that the beat is on 145 BPM because from what I've noticed, Skype here tends to use uh, higher BPMs because, you know, to achieve this aggressive sound, you'll usually use like a higher BPM. As for the mix, um, I didn't really do anything with the kick, all I did was lower it in the mixer, I actually used full velocity in the piano roll, and I slightly boosted the low end in the mixer EQ, I felt like uh, adding an actual EQ wasn't necessary, and there's that. It's also sidechained to a uh, sidechaining track where I'm using the peak controller, you can actually find a tutorial on my channel on uh, sidechaining and how it works. You can also use limiter, I haven't used it that much before so I don't know exactly how to set it up. I also used a reverse kick, uh, I also have a video on that as well, and it's the same kick just reversed. Now for the 808s, which are probably one of the most important elements, you know, besides the melodies, uh, I also noticed that Skypeer is using probably either the same 808 or uh, just the same mixing, so it kind of has the same sound every time, you know, due to his signature sound. And uh, yeah, it sounds like this. So as you can see, there are a lot of slides because uh, I wanted the 808 to be melodic, not just the bass line. Besides the regular slides, I also had some coming home type of slides, so it goes up and then it goes down right before the note ends, so like this specific one. As you can hear, it's going up and then down. And I did this several times just so it takes it back. And for the mixing, um, I just EQ'd it, I got rid of the really really low ends, I cut it at roughly 39 hertz. I slightly boosted the bass, turned down the sub a bit, turned down the mids and kept the highs and the treble and uh, to make it more wide I actually used um, Ozone 8. I just used the imager. I made sure that the frequencies below 200 are mono and I slightly made the frequencies between 200 up to 2k a bit more wide. And then the last thing that I applied was a kickstart which is a sidechaining plugin and I had it on 25% just so it wouldn't be as aggressive. But it does make it feel like it's breathing a little bit so it's a bit more interesting. Then another thing that you'll hear in Skypeer's tracks are the plucky 808 sounds that I actually made a video about like a few weeks ago and you know they sound like this. And these are really easy to do, uh, you can watch my video and once again these are really melodic, that's the whole point and the only difference compared to the tutorial that I made was actually panning the note so it goes left right and then slightly left right but it's closer to you know being in the middle and you know for these i just applied a simple eq got rid of the lows slightly got rid of the treble 
added some delay and then a reverb to make it more spacey, not to be confused with Kevin Spacey. And that's it with the 808s. Then for the intro section and to spice up the second part of the first verse, I actually added a Reese bass. Now you can make a Reese bass, I think using 3x uh, oscillator in FL, so you don't need any, you know, uh, plugins, maybe not even 3x. I know you can do it. You even have a preset uh, in my rumble kit, or if you have serum, you can watch tutorial, it's really simple to do. For the effects, as I said, I was using serum, so normally it would sound like this. It was a bit too screechy and a bit it has a lot of high frequencies that I don't really like and it doesn't sound as good in these types of bits, you know, using those high frequencies. So I just took all of them out, reduced it until like 470 hertz. And as it is now, it sounds good, but I felt like it could be a bit more uh, beefy. So all I did was apply a camel crusher on it with the American high gain preset. I think I didn't even tweak it, so. This is really sick, by the way. Uh, but I still needed to tweak it, so I added another EQ, did this, cut some highs, some, all of the treble actually, and then reduced the sub and the bass frequencies so it wouldn't be overpowering, because I had this before, having a raised bass in the intro and then transitioning into the 808, the Reese bass had more bass than the actual 808, so it felt really anticlimactic. Having the huge build up and then the drop, you know, felt kind of eh. And then I added a love filter with a high pass preset, and I actually automated the mix level, so before the drop, it's actually gonna sound like this. I actually have two patterns for the Reese bass the intro section, the switch up ish section in the, sec in the first verse. And then the second verse, actually, the second half of the second verse uh, is full Reese. So I actually tried to make this a bit more melodic, kind of mimicking the 808 with slide notes, which are basically portamento notes, or I just enabled the portamento in Serum, so it's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound weird by itself, but it does sound good with uh, the other elements playing as well. Now, I didn't lay out the snares in order, so I'm just gonna solo them and then uh, go over them in order so it's easier to explain. So let's go over the main snare, which is, you know, the, the most important snare, basically the one that gives the rhythm kind of, so... He mostly uses this specific snare or a similar version of it. Uh, this is actually my version with another snare combined. But this is the basic uh, idea of, of a Skypeer snare, I suppose. And then he uses this one as well, which is... He uses it in a stutter-ish way, as you can see by the pattern and some rolls here and there to actually fill in the gaps. So it's gonna sound like this. And it's also good to have this snare specifically uh, tuned because this one is also kind of melodic so you don't want this to fight with the melody you also want this snare to be in key and for the stuttery sound i actually i'm not sure if he's using the same method or he's actually applying like gross beat or something to actually create a stutter effect or <clears throat> if he's doing this then i'm pretty spot on because all you have to do is basically enable the envelope for the snare so you have full control over the notes length and just chop it in half so it stutters, you know. This is the exact same thing as this, just tweak the notes and these are simple, simple rolls. I just deleted the last note. The third snare is actually the same snare uh, on a different mixer track with some delay and uh, it sounds like this. It's also panned from the right to the left, as you can see. And then the second part of this pattern is panned from the left to the right and it's one octave lower. And it also goes well with the uh, 808 plucky thingies. 
and it's really nice it's really complimentary the four snare is actually a um, snare roll that's quite uh, laid back i suppose it's it, it doesn't come in as often as the other ones and it sounds like this once again panned and rolls they do have some delay on them and i think i actually eq'd them got rid of the low frequencies and this is the last snare it goes right before the normal snare and after like this and this one also has a uh, high pass sort of uh, eq on it so getting rid of the low frequencies so it doesn't feel you know more beefy than the actual snare and that's it with the snares now let's go over to the melodies as you can see i have four midi patterns and the last one is an actual uh, sample loop because when i first started the project i wasted like 45 minutes trying to make sure the melody sounds right i took a break came back to it it sounded like ass so i felt like i needed some sort of help so i went on splice found myself a piano and then I tweaked the notes so it matches the piano and that was it. So let's just go over them one at a time. So the first melody was this one. It's actually, I think, the same sound that uh, you can hear in Night Lovell's uh, Boy Red. Just, you know, different notes. I was trying to go for something that was a little dark but also kind of melodic so I feel like this uh, achieves it. And then the second melody which is a bell sound, uh, basically the in memoriam sound that everyone uses in trap beats because it sounds good. It's also overused but it sounds good and yeah it sounds like this. And it also has a halftime on it, so you can do this in gross bit if you don't have halftime by basically putting it on halftime and then uh, changing the mix to like roughly 50% or something. Although what I did in, in halftime was actually changing the band frequencies so it lets the high frequencies bleed through. So it's a bit more advanced compared to gross bit, I suppose. So without it, it would sound like this. It doesn't sound as full without uh, halftime. The third and the fourth melodies are actually choirs. The first one is panned fully to the left, while the second one is panned fully to the right. So they sound like this. And these aren't my best melodies, but they do fill in the gaps pretty well. You can barely hear them anyways, but they do create some more, you know, sounds basically in both channels so these aren't you know the main attraction of the track anyways and as for the piano loop that i was talking about you know found it on splice uh, all i did to it was actually just eq it and then once again apply a kickstart on it uh, this time a little bit more aggressive at 65 percent just so it's a bit more stuttery And I actually really like the fact that it's slightly detuned and all of the melodies together sound like this. And now a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in music production, design, marketing, video editing, you name it. And the premium membership gives you access to join all of the classes and all of the communities that are right just for you and your new year goals. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. I'm currently watching Making Music in FL Studio 12, Introduction to the Basics by Dmitry Belichenko. And honestly, I've learned so much and so many things that I didn't even know were considered as basics. And I highly suggest you guys watch this class as well. And if you guys are struggling with making your own melodies, there are tons of classes specifically made for music theory. And they range from beginner level to expert level. And you're always gonna learn something no matter what level you're at. Skillshare is also super 
affordable, an annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. So you can join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. Now let's go over to the open hats, high hats, crashes and everything. For the open hats, there's nothing crazy going on. I have two of them, one that goes on the second beat of the bar and then one that stacks with the snare. So they sound like this. And then I added a uh, post-processed open hat, which is basically a simple open hat with the PC Low Pass Plus Phaser preset from a Love Filter applied on it and just resampled it. So it's gonna sound like this. It's really subtle. I also added a delay to make it seem more interesting and that was it. As in for the crash, uh, it's the standard trap crash. And I did enable the um, envelope on it as well, so I have full control over the notes, just so I can do this. You know, it's a bit more interesting, and it gives it a nice touch. Now, the hi-hats. Uh, I wanted something active, but not over overly crazy, you know. I started with a simple two-step pattern, and then I added some rolls here and there. I played with the panning a little bit, just like randomly dragging my mouse up and down, and that was it. So let's give it a listen. And that was it. I basically copied and pasted this pattern over to the side because I was lazy, but I did modify one tiny note, which was specifically this note. Um, I made it two notes higher and I actually made it into a roll. That was it with the hi-hats, the main ones anyways, because I added an extra one, uh, which was actually a low hat and it sounds like this. And normally uh, it sounds like this. So I just added a delay, like a really fast one, as in 0 0.25, so it's still uh, on beat, just really fast. And then an EQ to get rid of the low frequencies, because it was bleeding, like in the sub frequencies, you couldn't even hear it, but it was bleeding, so I just decided to cut it out. And I also made it 100% mono, because normally it would be a little bit on the left, which isn't a problem, but I felt like I wanted the hi-hats to be somewhat in the middle. And then I added some effects, some uh, swooshes, like a tiny amount of, of them. Uh, I didn't want to go too crazy with uh, with sound effects or vocals, so I started with this this moaning. <sighs> Hopefully I'm not going to get demonetized because of it. And then uh, I added the classic... Uh, woo! <laughs> I just pitched it down one octave and I stretched it a little bit so it's a bit more uh, on time with, with the BPM and everything. And I added a reverb and delay. The same thing basically as the moaning minus the delay. And then uh, the swooshes are basically some things that I found in the Kashmir kit. So it feels a bit more uh, full when it drops, even though this is just a build up, not even the actual drop. And then what I added was a drum fill to basically divide the first and the second part of the verses. I basically took this drum fill that you can find in my drum kit. I made it on time and then I tried to create a transition so it doesn't come in out of nowhere. Uh, now for the automations, I actually started on the master track with a halftime plugin as well just so it, it starts like really dark, halftime, and then slowly gonna transition into the normal uh, sound of the track and also um, a reverb which has the dry level at 55% the wet level all the way up to like 90 something percent tweak the low cut and the high cut the size as well slightly increase the decay level and turn down the bass slightly and so it's gonna sound like this it sounds more ambiental and more spacey. You could also um, automate the stereo separation knob on the mixer track, on the master track, I mean, and make it come from like really wide to normal, basically, but that's up to you. And I added a PC Low Pass Plus phaser uh, effect on the master track as well when the second Reese bass comes in, basically before the second verse, so... <laughs>
which sounds nice if you ask me. And that's how you make a Skypeer-ish track. But that's about it with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want me to make something more specific, like a specific artist that, that you think I could pull off, or, you know, some specific uh, things regarding production, or if you want to hear some tips and stuff like that, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll probably do it. Anyways, it was a boy Ganso, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.